You missed quite a scrap, gentlemen, and an opportunity to slay a monarch. There was a struggle and the prince was wounded. You've all seen the magical phenomenon covering the battlefield. For any who still have doubts, this is no mundane mist, nor a petty fairground illusion. Most likely, we're up against a blood curse, an old and powerful spell. We do not know who cast it or why. For now, I have one piece of good news and several pieces of bad news. The good news is that Henselt and his army have been halted for the time being. And the bad news? The mist will grow. It may even engulf Vergen. Furthermore, wraiths may emerge from it. Can they be made penitent? With an axe to the head? In theory, yes. But I would suggest putting your faith in a silver weapon. Furthermore, the ghosts will weaken as they move away from the mist. Is there any way to drive it off? Exorcise it! A question for myself and Geralt of Rivia. The Kingslayer? Contrary to what old women at the wells say, he did not, in fact, slay any kings. Of course he didn't. Wouldn't hurt a fly, that one. Look at his eyes. You'll see he's the sensitive kind. Whatever you may see in his eyes, few know more about lifting curses. Gentlemen. I do not require you to understand this phenomenon, but there are a few rules I insist you must follow. Here we go. No one is to approach the mist. It is mortally dangerous. In addition, we need to learn the story of the battle. For this, I especially count on the aid of Mr. Cecil Burden. At your service, my lady. Thank you. To lift the curse, we require some objects symbolic of the war. Ones belonging to those who perished here three years past. Pfft! More scrap iron from that massacre lying about than lice in Cecil's beard. I thought curses were best handled with... Please leave the thinking to me, Mr. Zigrin, and I'd gladly hear less from you from now on. The objects must be magically active and strictly linked to the ghosts of the fallen. That is all. Let me be clear. You're all to aid Philippa and the Witcher. What are you grumbling about now, Yarpen? Uh, <clears throat> it's something in my gullet. Take a swig of wine. Now, to worldly matters. How many are we? Saskia, you know well... How many? We dwarves are near 200. But don't judge us by our number. A half thousand peasants will come. Though you'll get no precise count. My lords? 53 knights and another 200 armed men. Not enough. Henselt leads 5,000. Five to one against us. What think you of that? We are few, they are many. But we have our walls, low though they be. If we had archers, who knows? Oh, for a regiment of heavy arbalists from Lyria! We have something better. Jorvith's elves. Scoyatel. Gentlemen, I give you Yorveth. What do you seek here, murderer? A hundred of the North's best archers await your orders, Dragon Slayer. You wished for archers? Here they are. I take no pleasure in fraternizing with elves. But even a shit-coated stick can be a weapon. He burned down the villages of many in my horde. The free peasantry is one thing, but a criminal with a price on his head in all the Northern realms? This is too much. Saskia. Say the word and we'll depart. Hear me out. Yorvath came to fight for me. I trust him and I know that he'll stay the course. Just like each of you. How could you know that? He's an elf. Treason runs in his veins. He's been fighting humans for a century. But for the first time in scores of years, his fight makes sense. The Scoyatel know no peace. They've died for Nilfgaard. For the Valley of the Flowers, in vain. They've been betrayed and cheated. Now they have a new goal. The Pontar Valley could be the first state where no man would have to fear elven arrows when venturing beyond city walls. And elves and dwarves wouldn't live in ghettos or on reservations. First, however, we have a battle to win. 
You know who we're up against. It's a splendid army, brave and well-led. They cannot be scared off or routed. They have to be killed. I want Yorveth to sit at the same table as we do. I want him to kill Kedweni for us. And I assure you that he'll do so with a smile, if only you let him. If I'm to see a smile on that skinny face, I'm in. Yorveth stays. Bloody hell. Father's turning in his grave, but a must's a must. I say I. Nay, you killed my men, Elf. Remember them? If I hadn't killed them, they'd have killed me. All right. For the sake of better times, and for Kedwin's doom, I down with the sons of bitches! Cheers! She's dying. Take her somewhere safe and guard her with your lives. I'll gather what I need and join you soon. I'll place my best warriors on watch. Quickly, lads! A letter! She ceased casting spells. Saskia, is she alive? In a manner of speaking, I've slowed her life functions as far as possible. Her condition is stable. Do you know the poison? Thormador, commonly known as Mage Pain. It has a terrible reputation. An antidote must exist. What can we do? Treatment will require herbs, magic, and blood. Not ordinary blood, I presume. Correct. We require royal blood. We could use Letho right now. The nearest king is on the other side of the Mist of Wraiths. You misunderstood me. It need not be the blood of a ruling monarch. It is the genotype contained in royal blood that is required. Kings issue from ancient dynasties. Over the ages, to survive, rulers needed exceptional resistance and strength. As royal dynasties rarely admit common blood, the strength of their genes remains great. I shall employ self-healing genetic therapy that will teach Saskia's body how to rid itself of the poison. You'll have a drink human blood. No, I shall inject it directly into her heart. What kind of herbs are we talking about? I'll need a subterranean variety of purple foxglove, known to the dwarves as the Immortelle and an elven rose of remembrance. Where will we find immortelles? They grow deep beneath the earth, which should not be a problem as Vergen lies on top of a mine. How will they help Saskia? Mage pain wreaks havoc in internal tissues. The immortel will help restore them. Hmm. Triss had a rose of remembrance. She claimed the flowers are exceptional. Long ago, the En Shea, who succeeded in cultivating the roses, enjoyed great respect. Times have changed. As have elves. There are no elven gardens nearby. We must return to Flotsam. Triss has a rose of remembrance from Flotsam. It's her we need to find. What else do you need to heal Saskia? Thormador is a self-perpetuating substance. Any incursion into a cluster of poisoned cells causes an immediate chain reaction. Each tainted cell that is removed is replaced by ten new tainted cells. To interrupt this reaction, I'll need an ungodly amount of the power. A water or air genie, or one of the twenty legendary rings of power would be best. One to bring them all and in the darkness bind them. Right. And then I'll have to run barefooted to the top of a volcano. All right, all right. Let's forget the rings. I need a vast quantity of the power, no matter the source. Find something. An immortel, a rose of remembrance, royal blood and magic sounds like a fairy tale. A poor one at that. 
No prince's kiss to top things off. I wish it were a fairy tale, especially a poor one, as a happy ending would then be inevitable. May I count on your help, Geralt? You may. What about the Battle of Wraiths? I must first see if the spells keeping Saskia alive are in order. Then we'll consider how best to send the Spectres to their rest. Actually, you could tend to that yourself. Ask the locals about the battle, maybe you'll learn something. In that case, I shall search for the Poisoner. Only Philippa Isleheart may enter. Don't let her die, Vatkin. People of Vergen, we have a magical mist full of ghosts just outside our walls, so you'd better think twice before entering it. The mist? May the plague take it. Threatens all manner of creatures, so anyone headed to the quarries or walking through the gullies should take exceptional heed. The squirrels that have made camp by the burnt huts are not our enemies, so says Saskia. So it is. Master Geralt of Rivia and Sorceress Philippa Isleheart will deal with the mist. Now, open the gates and get to work. <laughs> 